Okay, so we're just going to take our dirty water. So the way this contraption works is you turn this upside down whoop, into that little spot right there. It fills up with water. And then as we get this water too dirty, you'll hit the blue button and it will drain down into the basin. Sometimes it needs a little wiggle to get filled up. So if you need to do that, you can do that. That's our dirty water container. So I'm going to check my brush by cleaning it off in the dirty water container and then wiping it on a paper towel to make sure there's no paint in that brush. Okay. With it still wet though, I am going to simply take my brush and paint over any color that I had water with, so blue or red for mine. And I'm just wiping it across the color. And then I'm gonna do a line of paint. That's it, wipe it across the color, do a little line of paint. Again, I'm doing this up on the screen, you guys, so you can see. Just a line. That's gonna be number one. You do wanna have a pencil so that you can number things. Make sure you have your name at the top of your page. My water container is a little bit broken, so I'm just taking mine out. Okay, once we have number one done, we're looking at number two. Um, we're going to add a dropper half full with water to one of the little holes on our palette. Okay, so I'm going to take my dropper with the clean water cup and put that into one of the holes of my palette. There is room for you to each do this. Okay. The palette is the white tray with the holes in it that you should have grabbed. If you didn't grab one, go get one. And you're putting that right in the middle so everybody can share, okay? No big deal. We've forgotten something, guys. Okay, now I didn't rinse my paintbrush off from when I did this line. All I'm going to do is take my still dirty paintbrush and mix it into that water that I just put into the hole of my palette. I'm just stirring that together. And then I'm going to make another line with my paint. I'm not going to take a very full brush. I always like to wipe my brush one time on the side of the palette so it's not too, too full. Just a quick little wipe, you'll see a little bit of water come out of your brush, and then I'm going to paint with that. Okay, and then on your worksheet, you will see for number two, there is a question in bold there. Anything in bold is something you're going to write the answer to on your white paper here. So it says, how were number one and number two different? How are they different from each other now that you've painted them? So just write a quick explanation of how those are different. Okay, number three says to paint in a square with the same color that I just made. So from my palette, that color I made in my palette, I'm just going to paint in a square. We're going to come back to this later, so that's all it is right now is just painting in a square.
So for number four, we're going to do a wet on wet technique. So we need to get a second color ready on a second brush. So grab a second brush. I'm going to rinse my brush off. Remember, we want to make sure we always rinse and make sure that that brush is clean. So rinse it off. A little bit of drying on the paper towel. And then I'm going to load it with that second color I got ready. So I'm going to load it with my red paint. Load that up just a little bit. <clears throat> so I have two brushes ready to go. I've got my blue and I've got my red or whatever two colors you are using. And I'm going to paint another square. But immediately when I am done with the square, I'm going to put drops, little dots of color with my second color. So it has to still be wet when I do this. So this is number four. Just watch first. I'm going to paint my square in with my blue that I had in my palette. Again, it doesn't matter what colors. It's just the technique. So while this is still wet, I want to quickly switch to my red, and I'm just going to put some dots of color on there. Okay, now you guys do it. When you need to set a paintbrush down, there are little tiny dots between the holes of the palette. That is for keeping your paintbrush steady right on the palette. I'll show you right here. Like that. Okay, and then for number four, it says describe what it did. What is happening to our paint colors as we paint that wet on wet technique? Okay, when you're done, we're going to need another little hole filled with water, but water only. I'm going to use my dropper and fill that up there. Okay, so we're on to number five. Number five is called a gradated wash. And that means that the color is going to change. So this up here for number three was a flat wash. There's no change in my color right now. It's all just an even um, value of blue. But for a gradated wash, we can change the value or we can even do it changing the color. The one we're going to practice is just going to change the value of it. Okay, so we're going to read number five. Add clean water to your palette with the dropper. You should have done that, one of the holes of the palette, if you didn't do that. We're going to paint in another square, but we're going to go one line at a time. Okay, we're going to paint a line of color and then dip our brush into the water that we added and then paint another line until we build up to a full box. Okay, keep repeating it until we make a square. We do not rinse or wipe our brush and we don't add more color during this. Okay, I'm going to switch and do mine in red this time, I think, because I still have my red loaded on my paintbrush from before. You're just going to watch first. Okay, just watch the stream. So I've got my red loaded on my brush. Wipe it off just a tiny pinch. I'm going to do a line of color going across. I'm going to go back to my water, dip my brush in the water, 
quick little swipe and then come back and paint again. And I'm just gonna continue to do that. Dip, wipe, paint. Dip, wipe, paint. I'll probably do one more, I think. Dip, wipe, paint. Okay, and so it makes like a square. Rectangle is fine too, but that's the idea. Go ahead and try that on your own. So have a question there. So our question is, what happens to the color? What happened to my color as I moved down here and kept adding more water? So again, you're answering that on the white paper. Number six is lifting off. So I'm going to have you just kind of rip, rip a little corner of your paper towel off. And we're going to roll that up in a little ball, not too tightly, just a little crinkly piece of paper. And get that ready for number six. Okay, this time I'm going to use a circle, and I am going to go back to my paint set to pick up some paint here, um, because this does work better if the color is a little bit darker. So I'm going to pick up some paint from my paint tray. I'm going to remember I have my paper towel ready to go first, and I'm going to paint in a circle here. Just a nice little circle. Once my circle is done, again, you're watching first, guys. Press down with my paper towel and lift off. That is the name of the technique, lifting off. And you can see my paper towel has sucked away some of the paint, leaving kind of a cool texture behind. Okay? And then write down what you see happening for number six. For number seven, we're going to need a crayon. Pick a light color crayon. White even will work. Yellow, orange. Don't do any of the darker colors. If there's a pale pink, you could use that, but not the darker pink. You want a lighter color. And for number seven, we're just going to write our names, pressing kind of hard. I'm using white so you can barely see it. Okay, everybody's just watching the screen real quick. I've got my blue paint I'm going to use on mine. And I'm just going to paint directly on top of where I wrote my name. Everybody watching? I want a lot of water on my brush for this. And 
didn't press down hard enough, I don't think. Give yours a try. See if it works, guys. We'll try another spot and color it in better. Use your paint from your paint palette. So it's nice and watery. There we go. Now it's working. I didn't press down quite hard enough. Okay, when you're done doing your resist, again, you should be able to see that crayon resist if you put enough crayon on it. You can start to sort of see where my name one is starting to come through a little bit better. I just had a little too much paint on my brush and didn't press hard enough, I don't think. So I'm going to come up. I'm kind of out of space on this side, so I'm just going to find space on my other side here. Number eight says... To do one shape in pencil and one in crayon. And then we're going to carefully paint in both of those shapes. We're trying to see which one is easiest to stay in the line. So I'm just going to do squares. You could do triangles. You could do, you could do circles. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to do one with my um, pencil. And I'm going to do one in crayon. Um, a little bit darker color is probably better than my white that I have available right now. And then you're going to try painting them in <coughs> as carefully as you can. Try not to go outside of the lines for this. Because when we're painting an actual watercolor picture, we usually have our drawing first, right? So we want to test out how painting in a shape will work. Right now it's just kind of been a free paint. We want to try to really paint in those shapes. Okay, and then again for number eight, you're answering that question. Which one is easiest to stay inside the lines? Okay, and our last technique, we are going back up to number three where we had that kind of flat wash. It's all one color without any change to that value. And I'm going to switch to my other color. I'm going to switch to my red here that I had made. And I'm going to paint over that. Now that it's dry, it's not a wet on wet technique like that one. This one is totally dry. And I'm just going to paint over half of this shape. And this is called glazing. I'm adding one color over another color um, because watercolors are translucent. That means we can see through them. So the red going on top does not make it red. It mixes it. We can still see that blue from underneath. So this is an interesting technique. It will help you to get some new colors into things. But keep in mind, if you're just painting over something that's already there, it doesn't end up with just the final color. It does kind of mix with the color underneath because these are translucent. Okay, And then we're going to take a look down at the very bottom for our cleanup directions. We're going to make sure that our name is on our paper. Okay, We are going to be putting these in the drying rack that is the same color as your table color. We're going to rinse and dry our palettes unless we're saving our colors. Today we're not saving our colors, so we're just going to have one person take our palette up to the sink and you'll give it a rinse and you'll put it in the drying rack. Nobody's moving just yet, we're just going over it. For our paint brushes, we're going to give two rinses now. So we're going to give our paint brushes a rinse off in our dirty water containers to get the most of the way clean. And then this is the final rinse is allowed to be in our clean water cup now. So now I'm going to come back to my clean water cup for my final rinse. And you really shouldn't see this change color too much because we got out all of the paint in there. I'm going to take my paper towel and reshape those hairdos. Make sure the hairdos are nice. We put these brush end up in our cup. So we'll dump out all of our water in a moment. Those paint brushes will go brush end up in the cup so we don't wreck our hairdos. If you happened to get any color paints from one color into the other as you're working, 
You can just take a damp sponge and dab it to get that color out. We do want to make sure we do that before putting the paints away. And then all of our water gets emptied. So the water in this container, but also the water in this container. I will have you take this apart before you go up to the sink so we're not accidentally spilling it. We're going to drain this out by hitting the blue button. And then when you take this up to the sink, this lid just slides off. It's not a twist or anything, but all our dirty water is in there. We've got to dump that out. And again, we'll dump out our small little water cup and our paint brushes will go back. Everything will go back into our cabinet. And then we're going to grab our wet towel, dry towel system for our tabletop.